Hello ladies and gentlemen from slide nerd this is Vivs here what's up in this video we are going to talk about the fragment life cycle in android what are the different methods involved in the fragment life cycle what are the different methods involved in the activities life cycle how does the activity get notified of the events in the fragments life cycle how does the fragment communicate its messages through the activities life cycle and so on so in this video let's take a dig at each of these now what is the process of making a fragment there are four steps involved step 1 extend the fragment class step 2 provide the appearance in xml slash java now this is just like giving a layout to the fragment which you would do with activities all the time remember each fragment is entitled to have its separate layout but again it's not necessary you can have a fragment which is not seen by the user which means it does not require a layout step 3 override the on create view method to link the appearance this is where you tell the fragment that your appearance is contained in this xml file or here in the java code again we will see in detail how the on create view method works and how you are supposed to override this step 4 use the fragment in xml and java now this is probably the only place where java is the preferred approach compared to xml the reason you create the fragments dynamically at runtime in java and you perform the essential swapping but if you use the fragment in xml it is statically bound to the user interface in which you have defined the fragment again we will see these approaches static creation of fragments dynamic creation of fragments what are the different issues involved with them in the upcoming videos the fragment object is not as simple as saying fragment f equals to new fragment it exists in different states so let's see what those states are the fragment object exists as a java object when you say fragment f equals to new fragment but at this point it has not been linked with the activity inside which it is existent so once you attach the fragment to an activity then it exists as a java object plus attached with an activity even at this point the fragment may or may not be visible to the user so the third state of the fragment is obviously when it is a java object which is fully initialized it is attached to an activity and it is also visible to the user on the screen so these are the three different states of the fragment obviously we will talk about these states in greater detail as we go further in my videos and my playlist some of the methods in the fragment are responsible for fragment creation one method which is your on resume is capable of notifying the user that the fragment is running and some of the methods are responsible for fragment shutdown so what are these methods let's go and take a look let's talk about the different methods involved in the creation of a fragment now since the fragment is contained inside the activity it links very closely to the life cycle of an activity so we need to take a combined look at both their life cycles to understand what happens when inside the fragment first you have the on create method being called where the activity is able to define its appearance using the set content view method the fragment has its on attach method being called this is the place where you get a reference to this activity inside which the fragment is about to be placed you can use that reference store it somewhere so that later you can call system service or call find view by id using that reference the on attach fragment is called on the activity to notify the activity that there was a fragment who was attached recently now the on create method is called inside the fragment now what is the difference between the on create of the activity and the on create of a fragment pretty simple inside the activities on create you use the set content view and link the appearance in the on create of the fragment you are not supposed to access ui elements of the fragment or of the activity whatever the reason is the activities on create may execute before the fragments on create or it may execute during the fragments on create method so you have no way of knowing whether the activities view hierarchy was linked using the set content view method or not and hence trying to access the ui elements here will probably give you an empty object or a null object and that is going to run your app into a crash on the other hand you can use the on create in the fragment initialize long running operations 
then you have the on create view method that gets called now this is the place where you link the layout file of a fragment to its object it is just like the activity it has its own layout you just need to link it and that is done inside the on create view method then there's the on activity created method now this method is called after the activity has finished its on create method this method gives us an idea that the activity has finished its on create that means the ui is initialized and ready to use and that means you can access ui elements in the fragment through the on activity created method the on start is called in the activity again i have explained this in my activity lifecycle video if you guys are new to this please go back and check that out the on start is called in the fragment which is not much different on resume is called on resume gets called there is one small thing that needs to be noticed for multiple fragments these methods are called multiple times that means for every fragment there will be a on create on create view being called on attach fragment being called and on activity created will notify that the on create has been executed in the activity so this is the sequence of operations needed for creating a fragment now let's talk about the different methods that get called when the fragment is about to be destroyed let's say the user is exiting the application or something like that so first you have the on pause being called then you have the activities on pause being called there is no difference between both the on save instant state gets called in the fragment first and you have the on save instant state in the activity now on save instant state gives you a bundle object inside which you can store certain values so that you can use them later when you get back inside your fragment again again i have talked about the on save instant state and on restore instant state separately in a video on my playlist if you guys are new to this please go back and check that video out there's the on stop being called in the fragment on stop that gets called in the activity on destroy view and this method on destroy view is called after the fragment's view hierarchy is no longer accessible which means so far the fragment existed as both a java object along with its own layout file but after this point after the on destroy view it will exist as a java object yes but its view hierarchy which is defined in its own xml file is not accessible then the on destroy gets called in the fragment now after the, after this point the fragment is completely destroyed and exists as a java object to the activity yes but you can do nothing with it then there is the on detach method being called on detach is the part where the fragment which was tied to the activity so far is actually untied from the activity and after this point it's not associated with anything so in this video we have talked about the different methods involved in the fragments life cycle in the next two videos we'll be talking about the fragments life cycle first individually and then the fragments life cycle coupled and combined with the activities life cycle to understand the effect of what happens when in the meantime if you guys like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts i would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next bit have a nice day